Hey, we've talked about supply and demand, and we've talked about the different things that affect supply and demand, so we know what affects them one way or the other. What we need to also ask is how much. How much does a change in price affect a change in demand? And in economics, this is called elasticity. So for your notes, you want to write that down there. Elasticity is how much a given change in price affects a quantity sold. So how much we're measuring, and so that's why it's called elasticity, because we're talking about the expansion or contraction of the quantity based upon a change in price. And what that's going to change is the slope of the curve. So for you mathematical people out there, an elastic curve is a very flat curve, and an inelastic curve is a very straight up and down curve. So let's take a look at some of those right here. So what you've got here first is the elastic demand curve. And an elastic demand curve is going to lay down very flat. And what this means is that a small change in price equals a large change in quantity. All right? For your notes there, elastic is going to be a small change in price will equal a large change in quantity. And what happens here as an example is if there's a little change in price, towards the upside, suddenly no one wants to buy the product anymore. Or if there's a little change in price to the downside, suddenly everyone wants to buy the product. An example might be uh, the McChicken sandwich. I can remember back when the McChicken sandwich was a dollar, and I used to use this example in class. And then what happened is McDonald's moved their McChicken from a dollar to a dollar twenty-nine. And whereas before the kids could bring three dollars, they'd get a medium fry, a medium coke, and a McChicken sandwich, and they were good with three dollars. When they moved that McChicken from a dollar to a dollar twenty-nine, the kids said, well now I gotta bring four dollars. And what happened was, is they were able to substitute. Because Burger King saw this and said, hey, we'll give you our chicken fingers, I think they called them, or something like that. They, they moved those down to a dollar. So you had the McChicken for $1.29 or the chicken fingers for a dollar. And now the kids could go to Burger King and they could only bring $3 and they would get their meal. Okay, So suddenly that little jump of 29 cents on the McChicken meant that all these people left McDonald's, their demand for McChickens just fell through the floor. And all the kids went over to Burger King. All right? So that's an example of an elastic product. And what you're going to find is that almost everything out there is elastic. So for your notes there, most things are elastic. Almost every product. I mean, there's like tens of products that are inelastic, and there's tens of millions of products over here that are elastic. So if you had to guess, most things are going to be over here. The ramifications for this are huge, especially if you're running a business. Because if you raise your prices even a little bit, everyone's going to run away from your product. They're simply not going to go to your store anymore. So because of the ability to substitute, because of competition, business owners cannot just raise their prices to whatever they want. In almost every situation, the business owner has to be very price sensitive. So that most of the time, for everything they do, they're only making a few cents on each thing, and they're hoping to meet as many customer needs as possible, and those few cents can turn into more and more dollars. So, you know, for most business people, they might be greedy. In fact, they probably are greedy. But what keeps them in check is the other greedy business people. Because if McDonald's raises their price just a little bit, Burger King will jump all over that and steal their customers. And that's what happened. Okay? And so what you find is that there are certain things that make products uh, elastic or inelastic. So over here for your notes, we're going to write them down. So these are all the things that if these attributes occur, the product is most likely elastic. So a luxury item, is it a have a lot of substitutes? Or is it easy to delay purchase? So you could live your whole life without ever ordering a McChicken. It's really easy to delay purchase or buying a shirt or something like that. So 
you've got so many different options and you've got so many choices it's a luxury item you don't have to get a McChicken you could but in this case it's considered a luxury because you've got so many choices you don't need it to live and it's easy to delay purchase on the other hand there are a few products that fit into this category they are the opposite so if they are an elastic or an inelastic product then they become a necessity if they have no close substitutes or it's hard to delay purchase then it's going to turn into an inelastic product so our demand curve as you can see there is laying pretty flat but now it's going to be almost straight up and down the slope of our line is going to be way up there and for you math majors out there this is where you'd have to calculate y equals mx plus b find the slope of your line and now you know the elasticity okay so here we go in this case these products are inelastic that means that a large change in price will lead to a small change in quantity so these businesses can raise their prices tremendously and people, you know, they moan, they groan, I don't like this, and they go out and buy it anyway. The most common of these would be gasoline. All right. You'll complain if they go, you know, the gas prices go up to $10 a gallon. It's like three or four times what it is now. You'd go into shock, but would you stop driving? Would you? I mean, would you take the bus? Because we really don't have one. And it might be just expensive because they have to buy fuel too. They'd raise all their prices. Would you substitute your car for like a horse and buggy? Like what would you do? Get a scooter? Um, you know, is it easy to just not drive for a few days? And then how are you going to go to the store? How are you going to go to a job? How are you going to get around town? How are you going to go to the hospital? How are you going to... So transportation matters a lot. It's very hard to delay purchase. There's really not a substitute for the car. Um, you know, and is it a necessity? Yeah, pretty much is. And so because of that, if the gas prices went up and up and up, you'd just buy them. You'd complain. You'd try and coast. You'd try and drive a little slower. Maybe you trade in your car for like a little Vespa scooter. But what are you going to do when it snows? You know? So there's a lot of problems with that. And we're going to talk about these types of products more because they cause people all kinds of problems. The majority of the world is over here. Okay. So don't worry about it. These are more the exceptions than the rule. Uh, so these prices are inelastic. We can have large changes in price. It could drop way down, but people aren't really going to buy more. You know, if the price of gas went to 10 cents a gallon, you're not going to be like, woo, let's just pour gasoline on the ground and light it on fire for fun. You know, that's illegal. And <laughs> you're not going to do that. You're still going to go driving, but you can only drive so much more before you're just like, eh, that's it. Okay. So those are the kind of things where if there's fluctuations in price, it really doesn't change the quantity much at all. Uh, think of some of the other things here you might think of like uh, milk is an inelastic product. It, it's kind of a necessity. There are a few of you out there that are milk uh, in, or intolerant, I guess. Yeah. And you can't drink milk. And so you're saying, well, what about me? Well, these are averages. So this is the average demand curve for like the whole country. It's not just your demand curve, okay? Uh, milk, in the Western world, you'd put bread. So in most Western countries, you'd put bread. It comes from wheat flour. Um, a substitute for that in the East, countries in the East, you'd put rice. So there's bread, you know, there's wheat flour, there's rice. And that's about it. Well, that's a first on a video. All right. So what you've got here is the wheat flour, like bread. You've got rice if you're living in China or Vietnam or someplace like that. There's no real substitutes for carbohydrates like that. I mean, sugar cane. I guess you could eat sugar all day. That wouldn't really help you. Sorghum, millet, a lot of those like seed kind of breads. But 
there's really not, you know, there's no substitutes. It's really only two things. It's really hard to delay purchase. You know, you die without carbohydrates. Uh, so it's a necessity. So yeah, it's going to be, you know, pretty, pretty straight up and down. Um, and these are the pretty normal ones that are cited in most textbooks all the time. Um, you could see some very interesting ones like like this. What if a line was perfectly straight up and down? What that says is you will buy a certain quantity and the price is irrelevant. It could be straight up and down. You will buy a certain quantity and you will pay an infinite price. It just doesn't matter what the price is, you're going to pay it. So imagine if you went to the doctor and he said, well, you know, you're going to die. You've got an incurable illness, but here's the cool thing. We've got this medication. It costs a thousand dollars a pill. You're going to buy it, right? Okay. I mean, because it's a necessity. There is no substitute. It is impossible to delay purchase. So if you buy it, you'll live. And if you don't buy it, you'll die. You're not going to sit there and be like, you going to bring the price down. <laughs> you're not going to bargain with them. And how much are you going to buy? You're going to buy what you need. So anyone who has this condition or disease is going to buy it. And only those people are going to buy it. And what are they going to pay for it? They're going to pay whatever the company decides to charge. So we'll get into those in chapter seven when we talk about monopolies a little bit, because oftentimes monopolies will develop over these type of issues. Like there's one drug, it'll save your life and it costs an infinite amount of money. So at some point we have to set a price and that's, you know, between companies and the government, we'll talk about that. But you can actually have a demand curve that's straight up and down if it's life-saving medication. Okay. So that's one right there. Uh, the other one we want to put up there though are addictions. Addictions, for those people that are addicted, the elasticity of the curve is very inelastic. It's not, I mean, I could go without Mountain Dew, but then if I drink it every day, could I? Mm. See, it's right up there. So coffee drinkers, actually for them, coffee is an inelastic demand curve. For people who don't like coffee, like me, I'm like, I, I don't like coffee. For me, it's over here. I don't, I don't care about that. But Mountain Dew's over here, okay? So that would be things like coffee phones. People are paying like a thousand dollars for these new iPhones. It's inelastic. Can you go without a phone? I mean, for thousands of years people have, but apparently now it's a necessity where you can't let it out of your sight. You're constantly looking at it. If, you, if it's hidden or broken, you like break down crying, you know? So that would be an addiction. It's a phone. Now, probably when I put addictions up there, you weren't thinking these things. You were probably thinking like cocaine. Yeah, right there. It's inelastic. In fact, for some junkies, it is perfectly straight because that's what happens when you get hooked. You'll pay anything because you want it. And there's a certain amount you want and that's it. All right. So you want that amount and you'll pay whatever it takes to get it. So anything that is an addiction is an inelastic curve. All right. Could be video games, could be coffee, could be cocaine, could be all that stuff. All right. So those are inelastic curves. Now, what are we going to do about this? Well, here's the thing. In the short run, uh, we have e elastic and inelastic. But in the long run, everything's elastic. Because if the price of gas was to go up to 10 or $20 a gallon, it would take a while, but we would learn to substitute. The law of substitution would take over and people would just say, hey, I'll just drive an electric car. And we'd switch our whole economy from gas, power, gas powered cars to electric powered cars. And these days, you know, they're coming on strong, pretty good with electric cars anyway. So it would just accelerate that change. So in the long run, everything's elastic. Everything is elastic in the long run. All right. So hopefully that clears some of these things up about a change in price and a change in quantity, because it's not just about the fact that something shifts it, but the question is how much, how much of a shift is it going to have? That's what we need to figure out.